<laughs> yeah, yeah, but it was funny because, yeah, but when we were coming down here to Philadelphia, I was just like, sweet, it's going to be only like, I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like awesome. I get to wear my, my fall clothes and stuff like that. Right. And I'm like, sweet, where he's just like, Buying a buying a I jacket have to, to buy come extra here. Stuff. We, okay, let me tell you. In Southern California, we have like our winter, our cold set, and that's the one where like okay, we have to go up to the mountains, and so we have one set of cold stuff. Like the idea of having two or three cold days back to back, you mm -hmm. know, like I actually have to get clothes for that. Yeah, <laughs> just just for that. But um. So technically, the panel has started. Okay. I think right. We have Actually, we still have technically one minute. Oh, whatever. I will also complain about one thing for one minute, which was when I when I made <laughs> jokes of when I made jokes of LA traffic. A bunch of people wrote to me from other parts of the country to complain about their traffic in other locations. Particularly, I got so many people from Washington D.C. I was like, <laughs> "Oh, you think you assholes? You think that LA traffic is bad?" <laughs> Excuse. Um, actually, I didn't get anyone from Atlanta writing in from yeah, that. Not from Atlanta. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So now did we start? Okay, it is 11.29, so I believe it is now the start of the panel. Yeah. We are good to go. So if you didn't know, I'm Dingo from Dingo Doodles. And uh, I'm Puffin <laughs> from Forest, and uh, Joe Cat's around. He's uh, he's coming. It's he's his own like spirit so, animal. Um, so, so anyway, he's... I'm Puffin Forest. I run a YouTube channel called uh, Puffin yeah. Forest. And um, uh, I make animated videos on. Uh, I make animated videos on Dungeons and Dragons and uh, oh. tell the stories. Online tabletop RPGs, and um, I do as well. <laughs> <laughs> what up, nerds? <laughs> okay, you made that head. I did. Yeah. You have to wear it the entire panel now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But you made this bed. You must lay in it. <laughs> <laughs> That sword, that sword and shield was provided by Patrick. Shout out to Patrick if you're out there. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Okay. Yeah, you're lucky my reflexes are not great right yeah. now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hope it didn't hit you too hard. No. Anyway, this is Joe Cat. Okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, let's go for it. So I'm Ben Puffin Forest. Uh, I run an animated uh, YouTube channel on uh, Dungeons Dragons and uh, other tabletop RPGs where I tell stories from my campaign started about three years ago. And I started with kind of like a mouse and just sort of like drawing stuff like that. And then several years ago, I got into a drawing and a drawing tablet. And before that, I used to do like blog stuff where I tell stories online, which no one read. Uh, like, I mean, people would come in, they're like, oh, this is good work. And I'm like, thanks. And um, <laughs> you know how it is, like online content's like yelling into the void. You put it out, and you know. But it, I could definitely tell, like YouTube, it was like this was like this was the content I would kind of watch myself. Uh, but anyway, Joe Cat. Uh, my name is Joe Cat, and I do uh, animated D and animated D and D content on <laughs> YouTube called the Crap Guide series, where <laughs> where I inform people the best way to play D and D, which is to play it wrong. <laughs> Uh, and I'm Dingo from Dingo Doodles, and I animate. <laughs> uh, I animate a D and D series, pretty much of like a campaign that I had played, uh, called Fool's Gold. So I'm doing episodically, kind of like a retelling of it through animation. So, yeah. And other stuff. I, I do other stuff too. I do like guest spots. I had you guys as guests, which was fun, and. Uh, I do some life videos too, but mostly I have, I have a real passion for d and I'm on a d and kick, so. I just keep pumping out the episodes because you guys keep hyping me up, and then I'm just like, I guess I'm doing the next one because I'm just excited <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. And we are, we are part of something that is ever-growing, the D&D &D animation community. 
Yeah. But it's getting yeah. larger and larger by the moment. Like uh, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, that was yeah. that was crazy because I think it was like two years ago I released the video "Why Won't My Character Die," and then that one got like a hundred thousand views over like the weekend, mm -hmm. and then it just kept like growing from there because I had been you know making it for like a year where it's just like you put it out and it's like yeah, Thanks. Ben, you were you were sort of like the first big one that everyone kind of knew of, and then <laughs> <laughs> and people think I'm arrogant. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then further along, there were more people doing things like like Dingo and you know other people doing Z branching Bashu. out. Z Z does stuff as well, yeah. and then now new we wish people. He was here. Yeah, I could definitely. Would... I mean, I could definitely tell. Like there was some online animated content that got like really good views, and people were mm. watching it and stuff like that. And it's like, but there was no one who was doing it like regularly. Yeah, like, okay. And they're just like condensing their campaign into a way that is very interesting. Because like other people would do like animated D and D of other things like Taz or Critical Role, uh, it, but like you like. Now it's like people kind of doing their own campaign. So you have people like Aiden uh, and like people not even talking about their own campaign, but just talking about the game like uh, yeah, Kane Ku and Reba. Yeah. Yeah, Reba. yeah, and you talk about the game quite a lot in the yeah. classes and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and so there's like, it's really. Now there's, a, there's, there's just so much to D&D that you can, like, you it's have an unlimited amount of content to make. Yeah, it's thing. just. For, yeah. You, you can talk can about anything. anything it. Because it's, and that's, that's one of the things that lends itself so well to, to making online content is that you can talk about your own campaign, you can talk about other people's campaigns, you can talk about theoretical ideas for campaigns, you know. You, you can talk can about make, horror stories. Yeah, you can make an entire uh, series about why it's a good idea to seduce the main bad guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was actually the funny thing was that I made uh, the last video I had made or the previous one I called it like horror RPG story or RPG horror story or something like that and people got really confused initially because they're like, oh, you're, you know, it's a, it's a bad campaign and that's what I would assume and so I had to say like creepy horror RPG so that way just to clarify. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we've, we've all been doing it for like you've been doing two years? Uh, I'm going on two years in April. You're like three years, Ben? Uh, yeah, about three years. Yeah. And I just started like this year. <laughs> so Yeah, well, that's... yeah, you must have been done for a year. Then. Yeah, pretty that's much. Great. Yeah, but pretty much this panel is just like, oh, what, how do we do it? Yeah. I just, <laughs> how from, could you from, do it yeah, too? Yeah, yeah. yeah from the growing, from the growing uh, community, we can tell that a lot of people kind of want to do this as well. Uh, not as a career. This is not a panel about how to turn it into a career. <laughs> that was a fluke. That was just yeah. like, If you want to turn happened. it into a career, get a time machine and go back to like 2009. No. <laughs> no, it's, it, no, it's more just like, it really is up to um, like randomness, it's luck. Yeah. And for us, it was because it was new and yeah. people didn't really had seen it before. So everybody some kinda... people want to do it for themselves. Like I originally started the Crap Guys for my friends because my friends, I wanted to get them into Monster Hunter. I'm like, how can I explain Monster Hunter to them in a simple, fast way so that I did that? And you know, that's really where the heart of it should be is like, because people want to make these things for their friends and for themselves when, I don't know, like maybe you want to edit down uh, a session of audio that you recorded for your game so that you can play it for the next session and be like episodic, like on the last time on the adventures of the butt friends. And yeah. Then, like, yeah. I, uh, I initially did not make it for my friends. As a matter of fact, I kept it a secret for my friends. So <laughs> because it was just me t complaining about, or talking about the gays and stuff like that. And then it's like after a, while, a year or something, I was like, by the way, you guys, uh, <laughs> yeah, I kind of made some stuff about you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I make online content, and that was actually the reason I call it Puffin Forest was it was just like two random names, so that way it was like an alias or something. But I mean, it's like there's nothing like horrendously embarrassing for them. Uh, Put it on the table. I'm pretty sure there isn't. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. so let's talk about like writing yeah, and how do you, uh, making. Yeah. Content. So what's like the start? first couple steps of like what we have to do in our process, right? right? So I, the thing that starts is writing. You know, you have to write. You have to figure out what you're gonna do. What is the <laughs> thing that you're passionate about, that you wanna put out there? Uh, either it be information about D&D &D or about stories or, you know, I don't know. You yeah, yeah. You wanna talk it's, about tieflings. Well, for me, the know. thing was is that I just made videos based on what I would talk to people normally, and I would just, I just tell stories like all the time, so I'm like, okay, this is the kind of stuff I would do online because it's like I have practice mm -hmm. with it. Um, and so that was, that was a big like, tell for me about like what I was going to go into. Um, and uh, that's, and then after a while it's like, oh, okay, people come back for that and they enjoy that. And so it's like, okay, this is the kind of content that they're interested in. But how do you, how do you condense D&D &D into a story that's like 10 minutes or yeah, less. 10 minute video or so. How like, do you? Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of pain. I, uh, I, I struggle with that myself. 
how do you have a 50 hour campaign and try and condense it into like well, 10 never, minutes? That's why anyway. I went episodic. Like, l it's literally why I went right. episodic because there's well, Dingo, so you're much the only, stuff. You're the only one here who does like an ongoing story. How do you condense the, each session? Okay, so the main thing when you're trying to tell a D&D &D story is that you're trying to hit what was really important in that session. Like what are like the three things that was super important um, I don't go more than three because uh, more than three kind of like there's a lot of information and your audience can get lost. So you really want to just like simple, simple, simple. Um, and then pretty much, uh, so I condense in that way and then I roughly write about to about 1,100 to 1,600 words. That's how much my document is for yeah, 10 Yeah, I, I second that minutes. is, I, I have discovered, uh, there are a few videos where I will try to go like way over that. Uh, there was a super long <laughs> yeah, like fourth edition video, video I made that they have not, they've been giving me shit about it. They're yeah. like, why, the, why would you do that, Ben? Yeah, and do you want to like, die? Yeah. I, it was, it was inside of, I had this video inside of me and it's like, it's all just gonna come out in one shot. In 22 minutes. And it's like, I got this thing that's been in, yeah, in 22 minutes, that it's, it's been inside of me for five years, that video, and it's all gotta come out at once. Yeah. And yes. I think another thing about writing D&D &D is kind of quickly summarizing things, mechanics, uh, and like different parts of characters, because even though some people know about D&D, &D, well, first off, some people don't know about D&D, how would you exclaim it, explain yeah, it to your grandma? That was a yeah, surprising how would you thing, explain it to your grandmother? A, you a, a surprisingly large chunk of my content, the people who watch my content have never played D&D, &D, and so if you're talking about armor class or something, or saving throws, they're like, whoop. Yeah. But if you say, if you bring up like, oh, there was a spell and got hit, blah, 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 and they fall over, like yeah. that's a little bit more And also, but, whenever you're telling a story like Dingo, it's good to reiterate these things in case somebody's joining in or somebody doesn't know the character. It's like, so, uh, so and so is a warlock, and they have a feature called this. Like some people might play warlock and don't know about X feature or Y, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. spell. You, oh. Every time, and then you, quickly summarize it, like with this feature, which does this, yeah. and in this situation, you know. And then you can kind of reiterate, like I, every couple. Like I usually have a rule <clears throat> for myself of like every three episodes or so, I try to go back and, and just kind of remind the audience of what's really important because um, you know they may have forgotten about the major plot points or like oh yeah that character exists you know it's like you, know, you gotta remind them um, but uh, a lot of it with um, writing for D&D &D has to do with like I don't know um, I'm losing my train of thought oh Joe, help me. <laughs> I, could, I don't know I, where your train was heading. I could, yeah, I, I know. Know. It, I know. I it went off the rails, you'll, and now it's get, gone. You'll get your thought back. I'll take it. So I did not actually answer my qu the question. I just slammed my head against the thing. So I needed an actual answer, which is that, um, so like I'll have 50 hours of campaign, and a lot of the stuff is just boring. It's just boring. You know, it's like trading AC blows or something, or players talking about this or that, or they have like a 45-minute conversation that goes nowhere. And so there's a lot of paraphrasing that gets done, where it's like they had an hour and a half conversation, which basically boiled down to, we can't fight the dragon yet. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And then, uh, so a lot of the stuff just gets boiled down. And then um, I do know that like, it tends to, people kind of prefer like a setup, development, payoff kind of a, a, a situation. Like if you just say, oh, this funny thing happened, it's like humorous, but it's not like a video. It's just something that's funny. Um, there are some videos I've made where it's like a bunch of <coughs> random stuff, but um, people kind of like uh, introduction, act one, act two, act three kind of a thing. And like, I remember in one of my videos, I talked about how there was a new player who got introduced to the group, and it's like, new player, first level, First level, first level then. And the thing was, is I never followed up on that character again. They just kind of got introduced and everyone was asking me like, where is the character? What happened to them? Did they live or something? Because they felt like that was an act one set and that it didn't follow through on the two and three. Uh, but it was, I was following through on other stuff. But anyway, it's like, I do notice that people kind of prefer a development that happens. And if a character smacks another character on the back of the head, it's like, that's funny. But like, it's, if they have a history, it's hilarious, you know, or something, or they have some kind of a background uh, that would make it more interesting. And so, um, in in a D and D game, you have lots of random stuff that's happened. Dice is being rolled, and really, I feel like almost the the narrative is, to some extent, a lot of the narrative narrative gets developed like the day after, or when you're like thinking about it after the fact, where you're 
like thinking about what happened and it's finally connect the dots. Yeah. Finally connecting the dots. Because in the heat of the moment, you don't story. think of like, especially when it comes to discrepancies and plot holes. Because when you're playing D and D and it's off the cuff and it's improv, you don't think about that stuff. I, the, a big one was the the Malakar storyline, where it's like the main villain. So they're fighting, 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 and then the main villain. Uh, like they disrupt it, but one of the players has to leave and then they get sent off to all these other locations And at, at the time it's kind of like oh, it's sort of a letdown But then you piece the story together after the fact and it's like, you know This really was a satisfying end to it because of these things and how it developed yeah. Um, And yeah, yeah, it's mostly just like writing to the, the core. Yeah, whatever my, the core is my personal Preference I think I would do if I did make story because we've all been talking about making story like yeah, sorry, storytelling sorry, and sorry. I haven't done it, but I have thought about it, and I think what I would do is uh, you can cut out combat, like specifics. You can just be like, they fought, uh, they won, or if somebody said like a specific, think less about what like they did and what the general like Thing is. What, what did up, they do? Which what was is the that conclusion? In yeah. a TV show, the fighting actually goes over like really quick a lot of times, and even in like an anime where it's like it's a long time, like that fight will be like a pause, and then they're like looking at each other, and a thing happens, and then they pause and also, or something. Yeah, and they don't go like blow by blow. And even if you read like a novel, it's not like Aragorn hit the orc, the orc hits him back. Yeah. Aragorn hits no. the orc, you know, or something like it's that. It's like even, they trade blows. I, I actually yeah. don't necessarily. A lot of times, players would try or. This is this is an area where sometimes I disagree with other GMs. Where sometimes they'll add like flavor to it, of like um, add other description into it, and I feel like sometimes that can add baggage to the combat because suddenly it's now bloated, you know, or something. Where I prefer to kind of play the combat straight and just be like, okay, mechanically this is what happen happens, and then after the fact we can narrate in our head like this is the way it yeah. went down. Of this was just a beat down, just whap 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 whap, 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 whap and, and then he's like down. Same thing with dialogue as well. You can just like summarize. Instead of what they were saying, what is the general conversation about? Get to the like, core of it. And, yeah. And what was the what was the mood? How did if mm. they were mad, make them really mad? You yeah, know, it's yeah. like you really want to get to the audience as quick a pos quick as possible of like what is happening. So just condense and move to yeah. the main main point of it. Instead of so and so says this, and then NPC says this, so and so says this. No, so and so goes to talk with NPC about blah blah blah. They learned this and that. And then now we know what our next objective is, or now so and so is mad and goes and has a tantrum. Yeah, and I, I think also, <laughs> yeah, I think also a really important thing with writing, um, especially with retelling a story, is never to try to force emotions onto your audience. That's it's pretty important because you can always tell when a writer is trying to force an emotion of just being like, you feel bad for that character. And then the audience is like, no. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> proper build up. Da, da, da. Like the sad, it's always the worst part yeah, of the when movie, you start but it's like sad the sad music, music in, plays. Da, da, da. And it's like. No, you know, I'm not feeling it. Honestly, he's better off. When I, when I had, yeah. yeah when he's I, kind of a jerk. Yeah, when I had, <laughs> like he burned down that entire, like he started burning that hospital. Like, I mean, I don't feel, I feel a little bit bad, but not like too. Yeah, and I mean, when I had uh, one of my episodes that I did, which was, I think, episode five, and one of the, spoilers, but one of the characters died. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not the playable characters, but it was an NPC that, like, oh, my character fine. really, really cared about. <laughs> and to me, I was devastated, because I was just like, I love this character. But I didn't know what the audience would think. I was just like, look, you guys don't know him very well. It, it, it's OK if you don't feel anything. But I'm crying, you know? But I'm um, really upset. And it's just to be honest with your audience and just be like, look, you have to understand that they haven't had that time to really dive in and like that character sometimes. But it also turned out that like all my comments were just like, oh, I'm crying. And it's like, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> uh, so. but, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. talking about... Oh, wait, wait. I, one thing. Since I'm like the outlier, I didn't talk about making jokes yeah. uh, and how to be funny. <laughs> how, uh, to be funny. Okay. how to be yeah. funny. I need to... The easiest way to be funny is... <laughs> yeah. All right. Usually, like... <laughs> Usually, okay. <laughs> you want to... The wanna... funniest things are usually relatable things. You notice in a lot of my videos, I make things like, oh... <laughs> I say, say things like, oh, awkward moments, like if you figuring out if that teasing comment 
really hurt your friend's feelings or not, and you don't know. It's like, you know, people have been in that situation sometimes. Just like you're going to you're gonna hear that word for word in my next video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the, you know, the, the last resort is always self-deprecation. Don't, don't know what to make fun of. Make yeah. fun of yourself. Because you know, you know yourself the best out of anyone. Yeah. You know what makes you embarrassed, so... Odds are, maybe somebody else is embarrassed in the same way, and then that can be like the, ow, you didn't have to come to me like me like that. Yeah. That, that kind of humor is always good, but yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, moving on to like audio and... Uh, Push the button. Right. Thank you. So, <laughs> I had to tell um, everybody that's happening. Anyway, how have you guys handled audio? Uh, <laughs> I mean, Joe, I'd like to hear you first, because yeah. I always love your audio. Your uh, audio thank you. Uh, so if, if you want good audio, the best thing, like, mic can help, but, like, if you just get a decent, even USB mic, um, it can be fine with some nice, like, finicking with Audacity. The best thing that you need that will help the most is a good recording environment. Put up cloth everywhere, get some soundproof foam, make sure the room is small. If you have a car, get, go into your car. Go into and your car. Record. That's what I did before. Take your laptop, yell into the void. Uh, have your brother over here give you shit about it. Yeah. <laughs> probably tell your mom. Was someone trying to kill you, Ben? No, Will. Learn I'm voice acting. I'm a famous parents, YouTuber. Thank you very much. I'm going to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have work to do. Oh, sure. Yeah. Work. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, turn your audio gain down real low. Yeah. As low, like, even if it's, like, bare, you can barely see the waveform, because you can always turn it up. But if it's, like, too high and it's clipping, you can't recover that audio. It's, like, it's done. It's going to be, like, <laughs> and it's, like, sorry, that was, too much. That was loud. Yeah. It's going to be too much, and you can't get it back. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was loud. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's also, you, it's, like, you're not used to, if, if you start talking for the first time, it's so weird. It's so, because uh, the problem is you're trying God. to do it naturally, and there's no way that you can do it naturally. Hello there. I am Ben, talking to you right now. And it's, it's weird, because like, sometimes people like, ask me, like, is something exaggerated? Is it over the top or something? And it's like, dude, yeah. I'm reading the script. Like, I'm trying to be <laughs> as natural as I can. That's one thing know, that just comes with practice. To, to the, it, it the character and my emotions at the time. But it's, like, it's so weird to try and recreate those emotions when I'm in the car with a microphone, <laughs> hypothetically. Uh, and with the police officer <laughs> knocking at your frickin' window. Yeah. And then, <laughs> 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 officer, this is perfectly normal. Just me, lots of screaming. I, excuse me, sir. Yeah. It's okay. This is for a YouTube channel. I'm sure officers will always appreciate when yeah. you explain I'm that. I'm a YouTuber. YouTube. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not Drop living out of my line. car. That'll go well. Oh, and always, always use a compressor on your audio to equalize it because mm -hmm. you don't want to like have talking yeah. real quiet and then suddenly, ah, you're screaming and then the blow out everyone's eardrums yeah. and then they have to turn it down. You want to equalize your audio. So uh, for me, for audio, like I don't have much technicality other than like I have a Yeti. I have like a, uh, yeah, the, the most basic that you can get because I was just like, I don't want to spend like $300. <laughs> I'm good with 100 um, So I, I use that. I actually don't have any like sound wall. Per I literally am in my bedroom and then I close all the doors and I make sure everybody's out of the house. I'm just like, I go throughout the house and I'm like, I'm going to be screaming. You know, please tell everybody that I'm not dying. So I, I go into the, my bedroom and then I just have a chair and then I just, I just speak, but for me, it's a lot of, I want it to sound like you're in the room with me. Like, I want to have a conversation when I'm doing these recordings because uh, the whole telling of a story just feels more natural if you're thinking of it being like at a party. Because um, before I did YouTube, that's what I would do. I'd go to a party and be like, hold on. I have to tell you about this one time. Yeah, you got to tell it like you're telling it to a I friend. I sang karaoke and it went really bad. I, <laughs> I, I had to practice a bunch of voices to, so that way the characters could get differentiated because earlier on I did not differentiate the characters by voice. And so you had this problem where it's like they all kind of blended together because I would just speak in a normal tone and it's like, this is not going to work. I have to have different voices. Yeah, like even accents. I have like five I could do. And there's one accent I can do and that's absurd. And <laughs> Damn it, he stole that accent. Now I can't use it for any other character now because he, like, owns that character. And so, because the thing is, I would use that absurd accent for, like, other characters. I'm like, oh, hello there. Okay, this is me. I'm doing my accent. And then, because it's like I had the one. And then now he took it, and so I can't do it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I find that with, uh, with, like, voice acting, which I mean, like, I'm still very much a novice. Um, 
but if it feels cringy, you're doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, it's, I think there's also this instinct. I remember when I first started, I would like, hello, okay, I'm doing, and you talk like really soft-spoken or something like that, because it's, it's weird. It's really weird to just be by yourself, just kind of shouting into a mic, yeah. and then it gets slightly less weird as time goes on. You just um, keep doing it. It, it. I totally get it if you're not comfortable, <laughs> believe me. I oh, understand. Yeah. I... Um, but you have to just keep pushing through and, and, and realizing that you have to do what's best for the video. Sometimes that means putting your you know, anxieties aside and being like, okay. Just put your pride aside. Put your pride aside um, and just put it out there. Be embarrassing. There's so many times, there's so many times when I finish a video and I can't even watch it. When I'm done, I I cannot watch some of my older videos. The the latest I'll go back like I'll go back like a year. And then no, I'm I'm talking about my now exist. video. I'm talking about my now videos. I'm talking about like the last video I posted oh. like a couple weeks ago. I uh, would finish it and I'd be like, "It's can I have Felix? Can you watch it? Tell it me if the, there's something wrong, and then the, I'll upload it." It is the worst feeling in the world when you upload a video and, you, and like I will rewatch it or something and leave and like, mm, yeah, I totally should have fixed that last yeah. week. Totally should have fixed that last week. Well, my videos are perfect. But... So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah, that, yeah. That's great to hear. That's the biggest thing when it comes to any voice acting or like creative is like you just have to let yourself be embarrassing and you are going to be cringe and you just got to get over it. Yeah, you just have to move forward. Because eventually that cringe is going to turn into like genuine like good substance it's and good it's going to be like, whoa. That looks so natural. They can just do that. Yeah. And, you know, if, if you're still uncomfortable, even the professionals cringe at themselves. Freaking, like, I'm sure Matt Mercer sometimes listens to his own voice and is like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, getting on to animation, uh, I will now Click pass the, the, button. the buck. Button. I will now I pass the buck over to what? these two. And of finally can talk we, off. Can we get the, <laughs> can we get the oh, there we go. Cool. Okay. Rad. Um, so anyway, uh, the thing is that these two have way more background in animation and artwork than I do. Yeah, I, I, think, ben, I think you should, yeah, you, oh, I think you should go first. Yeah, that's why I think you should go first. Well, that's good. That's great. <laughs> you, did, that's fabulous. you did not do any art I did until not, you no. started your YouTube no, channel. No, I, Which it's, blows I, hate, my mind. I hated art. Hated, 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 hated it. And if I could go back in time and be, talk to my high school stuff and be like, hey, by the way, you're going to be making cartoons, I would punch him in the face multiple times. Because uh, I, I just hated it, because it's like, it's so slow. It's like writing, but like really slow. You're like, hey, I want to draw this thing. And then you spend like two hours on it, and it looks terrible. <laughs> like, why would people do that? Um, and it was, uh, it was actually what happened. Once again, I was running a blog, and I was like writing, and I'd tell stories and stuff like that. And then um, I'm like, oh, I kind of want some art for this. And then I saw an artist working. And I think the thing that really sold it for me was I realized like they were making mistakes and kind of backing, going back over it to like fix it, where someone would draw a line, I'm like, ah, and then they erase it, and I draw another line, and I'm like, oh, like, and I, it made me realize how like, you know, they're fixing stuff, they're going along slowly, and like, and seeing the sketch work and realizing their thought process, I'm like, hey, I could do that, and then I tried it, and I was like, oh no, I can't, uh, but. <laughs> I, I actually, I got into art more as kind of like an intellectual thing of like, I can't do it, but why? And it's like, and <laughs> it's so like I just kept, puzzle for uh, yeah, and I kept, I kept practicing at it, but also um, when I first started, I just used a mouse to draw, and it was, that was why the character designs were the way they were. It'd be like two circles for eyes, and then an oval, and then two glints. Didn't you use MS Paint? Uh, I used something very similar to MS yeah. Paint that was like the bootleg version yeah. of something else. <laughs> but anyway, um, so, uh, so I started drawing with that. And so for the first year, all of my art was done with a mouse where I just kind of click, 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 click. And then I used, started using a drawing tablet. And uh, the first one I did, one of the first ones I did with a drawing tablet was uh, the Critical Role video, the animation for that. And that was because I was like, if this artwork looks terrible, I'm going to get stabbed to death. 
Uh, and so <laughs> the, I love the fans. It's just that I, I ha I'm like, I really want this to actually look decent. And then people are like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then the next one I made, or one of the ones I made after that was like, well, my character died, and then it, it became what better. Would, what would be your advice for someone who has never drawn before? What's something that you wish you knew when you started? Uh, it's... Uh, so the thing is that to me, I almost look at, at art or as drawing as it's almost kind of like writing, where you like learn a form, like you you learn a certain move to make a certain thing, and then you just remember those small components, and then the components come together for character. So it's like this piece plus this piece plus this piece in the same way that like letters, but it's a very complicated language in a way. And so you kind of make certain motions over and over. And also, when I would draw, it's very different from writing because I would just go like this and do chicken scratch. And then it wasn't until later that it's like, oh, you're using your whole arm like to make certain things. And if you if you don't really draw, it's very unusual. And plus, I like I was always worried about like, oh, the line's not straight. It's going to be kind of squiggly. And later on, I realized like, oh, it's like sometimes people use like a stabilizer, or they just have so much experience that like they do it quickly or something. There are little tricks that they can use to make it stable. Because I always would be like, it's got to be a perfect line, and it's got to be going like. And then it, 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 it wouldn't look right. And and, uh, yeah. yeah, just like the other skill, you've got to let yourself be cringe. Yeah, yeah, you got to. And on the opposite side of the spectrum, you literally d do drawing as a job, as a job, like yeah, before I did previously. and now. Yeah, previously. Yeah, because I went to, because I mean, I'd drawn my entire life. Drawing was like the one thing that I was good at. Um, so yeah, I went into college for it, I, but it was like a 10 month program. Uh, I couldn't do like a four month or four year program. I'd get too squirrely and jump out of the window. I just I can't do it. So I did like a 10 month program um, of just like digital art and traditional art. And then I took a year off and then I went to 2D animation um, school as well. So that was a 12 month program. And I just, I wanted to just learn it. I had this like urge of just being like, I, if I don't do this, I'm gonna regret it for the rest of my life. And I didn't know why. I was just like, okay, I guess I'm gonna go. And uh, I just did that. But on the side, from 2012 uh, till 20, well, till YouTube, uh, I did comics. I, I drawn comics in high school and all throughout my life, but then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take a swing at it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do comics. And uh, the comics was like one-off, funny panel kind of thing. It wasn't like a running story or anything like that. It was literally me just trying to figure out how to panel things, how to tell jokes. Uh, there's really terrible jokes in my old stuff just because I'm just trying to learn how to do comedy and stuff like that. Uh, so I did that for a while, and then eventually I got contacted by a company a game company that was like, hey, uh, we saw your comics. Uh, I, did a, I did a comic that kind of went a little viral, whatever it was, but uh, it was like a Sombra comic. So if you guys know Overwatch or something. When Sombra uh, launched, I made a funny comic about it. It was like something about Wi-Fi and, and all that stuff. Uh, but they saw that, and they were, the company was like, oh, yeah, can you do that? But like like 60 times, and I'm like, okay, sure, for our game? And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll make jokes for your game. Uh, so I did, uh, I did that for them for about a year, and I, that was a lot of fun. That was a, lot, a big learning experience for me. And then I would actually get a paycheck. <laughs> I was like, yes, finally, I'm, I made it. <laughs> You've done it. Success. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, previously I'd done commissions and tried to do that for a long time, but uh, finally I had like an actual pay stub. Um, and then I kind of, you know, I paid for my rent and I paid for very minimal living and I saved every single dollar. And then I had accumulated enough money at the end of that year contract uh, to literally have a year off if I wanted to. I was like, okay, this is. A, I will still be poor, but I will be enough that I can do whatever I want yeah. for an entire year. And that's when you started animation. That's when I started All YouTube. Right. And how would how can, would you? Can I step in and talk to the conversation about how we met around then? Sure. What, All right. What so, happened? <laughs> I don't remember. So what happened is that uh, she con she contacted me and she said like, hey, I'm interested in getting into animation, making Dungeons and Dragons stories. And by that time, like 20 other people had contacted me about that and they'd send me their videos and stuff. And I'm like, good, you know, good job because they want support. And it's like, like, what do I need to do? It's like, I don't know. And so, but anyway, so this person co contacts me, Dingo. 
and she's like, oh, I'm thinking about making a video. This is going to be my first video. Well, I'd video. already done the video. I, yeah, you I literally, had, uh, it was my very first video, yeah. uh, which was the karaoke video. Yeah. And then I was like, and so, uh, I, sent, I, I put it on Twitter and I, I tagged him in it and it says, hey, you kind of inspired me to do a funny D&D story. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> and so, and so, I check it out, and I'm like, "This is really good. This is your first video." Because I was coming at it from like, "Oh, like I had never drawn before." And so, eh. and then, like, I I see it. I'm like, "This is real. This is your first video. <laughs> this is really good." And so I'm Stop. like, you know, and so yeah. So if he was a real no, artist, he would have been I, like, "It's garbage." I, I was trying, <laughs> and. I kind of gave her the spiel at the beginning of like, you know, YouTubing's really hard. Like, if you want to do other ones, you know, it's going to be a rough road. And then, like, in the first week, she gets like 100,000 views or something. I'm like, she's fought. Like, okay. <laughs> well, That's... yeah, because we were going to Skype or whatever and yeah. talk. And we were then... going to Skype, like, at the end of the, the week. week and she had like 100 subscribers. And by the end of it, she had like 10,000. It's like, we. There's nothing I can tell you that you don't already know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, but on, on the topic, though, what is something something that you can tell people that they don't know if they would want to start getting into yeah, animation? So, something you wish you knew. Uh, the one thing, I mean, the big thing with animation and drawing in general is like, it's life drawing is super duper important. I didn't realize how much life drawing was important to me until like I left college and then I didn't have it all the time. So what, life, is, what is life drawing? Yeah, life drawing is pretty much when you have like somebody naked uh, stand in front of you and then you have to draw them. And I mean, you can put pants on them if it makes you feel comfortable. Um, but pretty much we did that in class all the time and they would be doing poses like uh, every five seconds almost. It was like five second pose, five second pose. And you'd have to draw it really, really quick. And by doing those courses, I did so much growth in those things. And that was super important to me. Um, you along learn form and silhouettes and yeah, for, it, yeah, it's form and silhouettes and learning how to draw fast and trusting your eyes. That was the big thing. To, for your hand to translate with your eyes is just like, y you have to learn to do that. It's not natural. You have to focus and uh, keep, keep working at it. Yeah. Uh, but also with animation, um, pick up the, the book by Richard Williams, the animation book that he do, do, does. I can't remember what but um, uh, the creator of yeah. Richard, uh, Richard Williams is... Yeah, and also the, the anim anime. animator's survival guide with the 12 yeah. principles of animation. Is that, is that the one? No, that's Ollie Johnston. Yeah, I yeah. will say I'm always that continuously impressed by your guys' artwork. It looks <laughs> Thank phenomenal. You. It and pace, pace yourself. As someone who doesn't pace themselves because I'm a hypocrite, pace yourself. <laughs> it was, I hope yeah. you guys who are fans of him appreciate him. He's been working. Non-stop on his video. <laughs> I'm, I'm done though. It's uploaded now. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. he was doing it. All I did not day know you completed that. Today. He was before this panel. He's like, I'm I'm working on yeah. a video right now. But yeah, uh, <laughs> one one thing, one technical thing. Learn how to do in betweens. For those of you who don't know, in betweens in animation is if I draw one pose of my arm like this, and then I draw a second one like this. Instead of going straight ahead, drawing it here, 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 here. I don't know where the arm's going to end up. I draw it here, I draw it here, and then I draw the middle here. And then it's going to look pretty natural. Do that with everything. That makes animation so much easier. Yeah, because you have to cut corners when mm -hmm. you're making such a huge amount of content. Like, yes. like to be honest, our stuff is like, uh, I call it slutty in animation. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's just like you have to cut cor corners where like my stuff is all black and white pretty much. However, you can trick people by c using colored lines. So if you have a background, and let's say there's a bush, just draw the bush green, like with a green line, and your mind will naturally fill in that color. <laughs> so. Well, Ooh, also, like, also change the scene a lot. Don't do the same, like. <laughs> no, keep going. <laughs> I didn't tell you to stop. <laughs> One thing that I, a pitfall that I run into is I'll draw a scene the same way as if the camera is like looking at them from a profile view and you can see their whole body for the whole thing. Change it. Maybe do a close up. Maybe at a low down view or high, mm, high up yeah, view. Yeah, I totally Change, have that same yeah, problem. Yeah, have variation <laughs> to uh, make it interesting because it's a visual medium. You want to make it interesting. It doesn't even have to have motion, you know, like, and another thing, another corner you can cut is uh, how you do, Dingo, where you'll take the character and you'll stretch them, like, away before they do the motion. And it can kind of give you the illusion of, like, the anticipation of, like, I'm going to go this way. 
Yeah. And a lot of animators do that. You can just do a little squishy and, yeah. then, and you're done. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's lots of things you can cut and you kind of also need to, with animation, get into the mindset of like, it's good enough. <laughs> Move on. Learn, learn yeah. to finish it. Don't add minute detail. Like, don't if it's perfection. like not, don't perfect, don't oh, perfect you it. Can't. You, you can't. You can't. With animation. You'll never will, and you'll never finish it. Yeah, Just and like shove it out the door. You can see the progress from like one, like my first video to the latest one. You can see prog progress of just being like, I've gotten faster, I've gotten, uh, the lines are cleaner and stuff like that. Because you get more no. confident as you go on. But if I had just spent my entire year on one video and be like, it's gotta be perfect, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't have had that growth. I would have yeah. just kind of gotten yeah. stuck. So you need to just get into the idea of that nothing's perfect and you're gonna do way better if yeah. you just keep moving on. It's, okay, so moving on to avoiding burnout. 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 Yes. Burnout. Because um, we are in a very, like, I mean, normally in people in most jobs, like, they do get burnt out of their jobs quite quickly. But in ours, like, it's such a passion-fueled work where it's like, ooh, I'm inspired to make this thing. That then when you're out, like, you're just done. It's so hard to tell jokes because it's like, yeah. ha, 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 I'm making a joke. Ugh. So especially, <laughs> especially if this is going to be a passion and a hobby thing for you, which it is, it's not going to be a career. Uh, don't crush people's dreams. Well, Jeff. I don't want to set them up and be like, <laughs> no, oh, you're going to go no. to VidCon 2019 and Don't make promises you can't keep. I, I, yeah, just like, because like, I don't want to be like, ah, you're going to go in the, the YouTube uh, Rewind. Like, that's what they sound like. That's them. Yes, <laughs> you're, going, you're going to YouTube Rewind and you're going to meet Sai again. <laughs> <laughs> He's releasing Gangnam Style 2. <laughs> and, but like... um. If, it, if you're not feeling it, stop. Try something else. Even, even if you still feel like, oh, I want to keep doing animation, but I'm not feeling it for some reason, try a different subject. Right. I got to ask your guys' opinion. How do you feel about, like, uh, like what, how has your cycle been for, like, burnout? Do you go through it on, like, a regular basis or uh -huh. anything? Also, just to clarify, burnout is just when you're just like, I just don't feel like making a video. Yeah. Like, I just, don't, I just don't have it. Yeah. Like, you I, um, love it and you wish that you could, yeah. but you're just like, I can't, and I would just, like, want to do Wait. something else. Um, one thing is to try to implement that passion into another thing. Like for me, I after I did the wizard video, I started doing Nuzlocke videos, and I still did animation, but I just did animations for the intros and outros, you know, mm -hmm. as a way to practice. Where I'm still doing animation, but just like not in the same form, and it was just something slightly different, and that inspired me again. Another good way to just get rid of burnout is to go live and you know have a life, maybe. Maybe What's, not travel if it's uh, if it's expensive. You can hang out with some friends, you know, do things, go to your so job. So once a year you do that one hang out with friends thing, and yeah. it's like I have fulfilled my quota, yeah. and that yeah. is yeah. You'd be surprised how refreshed you are and, like, how many ideas you'll get when you're not, like, just hunkering down and just, like, uh, you can't really force it when it comes to, like, inspiration and, like, the, no. the passion being I mean, there. you get burnout anytime you do a thing over and over. Like I was running, I got into running D and D games. I was running like three, four sessions a week, and I'm like, man, I love D and D, but not like, like that much. Like I love yeah. it like this much. You're eating not too this much, much cake. You have too much cake. You know, yeah. it's like you're just eating it yeah. like every day. Yeah. But uh, diversify your meal. But for me, I kind of go through like burnout cycles where I'll be kind of like, you don't really hear from me for a while, and then I'll work on other stuff that like doesn't get released, or like sometimes I'll have like. You know I'm in burnout phase where I'm writing like three, four, five scripts and I'm just like, I can't record the audio for a while. So sometimes that causes a bunch of delays. Um, and then other times I'll like, ooh, and then I'll be like putting them out. But there was a period of time when I first started the channel where I was just, I had like a winter break to make videos and I was just waking up and then making a video for the full day and I'd go to bed. And um, that was my entire day for like weeks and weeks for several months. And I was just like, this, I normal? cannot, that is not. <laughs> is that yeah. not normal? Ooh, one thing. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. If you have a project that's in the works, and this goes for anything, like any sort of hobby or like passion project. If you have a project that's in the works and you really want to work on something else, at least finish that project first. But don't go back to it and like at least finish it. And like so that you can learn and get better at finishing things. Because if you, you only start on. projects, you're not going to be able like as it gets closer to completion it's going to look bad and you're going to be like oh, but that's I, because you don't learn how to finish i also do that thing where i have like multiple projects and then one of the projects gets stopped and so i like ah! and then i go over to something else and i yeah. start working and then i get stuck there so i'm like ah! 
Yeah, that's a, that can be a problem. It's like yeah. when you open up the save file of like an old game and you start playing, and then you get you're at a part that you got stuck. It's yeah. the one part you hated, and so you boot up the game and you get to the part and it's like, eh, and then you yeah. quit the game and then you boot up another one. It's like, oh, but, another game I didn't like. But basically, you finish <laughs> it and then start that thing you're passionate for. If it's like if you're working on like a series like we do, like and you're not feeling the series, come back to it later. Finish the one you're working on, yeah. come back to it later, go work on that thing that you're like, oh, I can't wait to do that, go do that. Yeah. It'll refresh you, uh, change of pace is good. For me, with burnout, burnout is, uh, it's a constant struggle because like every video, I have a period of time where I'm just like, it's like a week where I can't do anything. And I actually have to completely step away from social media because like I love getting comments and, and messages and stuff, but it gets a lot and not, because it's bad, but just a lot. It's like it's a room full of people just went, hello, and it's like, a God. you know, <laughs> it's a lot. So I have to pull away, and I have to be like, no, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. Uh, doing my own thing. So pretty much I, like, turn off my computer. I'm off of the Internet for, like, three days. Uh, well, I, but then I go on to Netflix. So, <laughs> but it's pretty much like, oh, I have a series I have been neglecting because I've been working so hard, so I'm just gonna binge it now, and like, oh, I'm gonna go to the pool and swim, or like, I'm gonna um, go for a walk. And... Ooh, this is also important. Have a dedicated workspace and time, and have a dedicated, a dedicated play space and time. Yes. I, when I was in college, the place where I ate, slept, played games, and worked were all the same place, and it ruined me. Don't yeah. do that. No, it's I, have a, Even if you can afford it, have a dedicated work computer. Don't put games right. on, your, I, on your... I wanted to write a novel, and I used to work in my bed, typing stuff out, and that was the most miserable thing, because it's like you're in your bed typing, and then you go to sleep, and you spend another eight hours in the bed. Yeah, because that's become so your workspace, and you're like, I could be It is I could the most depressing right thing in the world. To spend like what sixty hours just in the bed? Yeah, because yeah. your brain associates that bedtime with you typing, and it's like I feel like I'm wasting time because I'm not typing. So that anxiety is keeping me up, and then you just die. Yeah. But anyway, uh, do we want to move over to Q and A stuff? Yeah, we can. We can. Move. I think we covered pretty much. I think we got it all. Yeah. We probably missed a whole bunch of stuff, but we'll remember. <laughs> oh yeah, like we did. Ten Definitely. minutes, a good ten minutes. Once this panel's done, it's like we totally botched that, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so now we're gonna open up to Q and A. Um, yeah. Do we have microphones do we have that microphones we can for people to line up? Line up. Yeah. Yeah. Or do we have people that are very loud <laughs> over there? Where? All right, you're very loud. You can say a question. So, uh, uh, where's Oh, yeah, awesome. Okay. Yes? Actually, we have mics oh, we do uh, have on mic. the two lanes if we oh, can because okay, we're streaming. Okay, we'll, they oh, yeah, yeah, we're streaming. Sides. And so it's actually better yeah. to use the mic so that yeah, way yeah, yeah, go they back can, and forth. people can hear that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, people can start lining up. Let He can go first, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, the, <laughs> the, him, the, the question thing, we can yeah. okay. No, after you get it. Yeah, yeah. So, Joe Cat, how do you um, record your no breath videos? Uh, so, I have a stutter, a very slight, because uh, I have fat lips, and <laughs> I, uh, it just takes practice. I do a bazillion takes, like I'll, sometimes one line will take like t ten takes, and I just kind of learn the line, repeat it over and over, and um, just until I get a natural one, just like over and over again, over and over, just practice, rehearse. Yeah. I don't speed it up, yeah. just practice. Thanks. Uh, so we'll probably just like back yeah, and yeah. forth, back and forth. Yes. All right, know. there you go. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I'm getting used to the mic too. <laughs> um, uh, this is for Joe Kett. Uh, I'm a very new fan, but a big one nonetheless. I oh, am glad. also an artist. I love your art style. I think it's very great. Thank you. <laughs> it's very fun. Um, and I don't. That's... It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering, like, how did you come upon your art style? I feel like it's very hyper-specific to you, so, like, how did you get that? I say this about any, like, developing art style is learn real life first, learn what you're going to simplify, and then sprinkle in parts of different art styles that you like. Like, for example, I sprinkle in a little bit of Disney and a little bit of anime because I like both of those things. But I learned, just like Dingo, life drawing, real life drawing, learn anatomy, because your art style is like a simplification and like expression of how you would see the world in this cartoony style, like 
how you would simplify it and then develop it from there. Yeah, that's, that's how I came to my style anyway. Uh, occasionally I would see an artist do a thing where I was like, I didn't think of that, and then I would try and implement it in, but every now and then go back, I would go back and learn figure drawing again. Awesome, and also real quick, did you plan matching your picture? Like, was that with your, with oh, well, your jacket and your shirt? I, I did, because this is, this is my, my outfit. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. All right, that side. Uh, hi, uh, might I just say it's an honor to stand before you guys. Um, you're like a council of elders or something. <laughs> um, but this is a question for all of you. Uh, how intensive is your thumbnailing storyboard process when it comes to uh, approaching a video or animation? You assume I do that. You assume? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I well, uh, okay. Sorry. So the I don't storyboard Thumbnail. as well. Uh, <laughs> we I, should, I should. If I ever I do, start doing what they do, I should. But. Uh, I Dingo, do. you probably, yeah, you yeah, actually storyboard. Yeah, I do. I mean, I do, like, this little guys, but it's it's literally, like, uh, at most every day when I try to tackle the video, it's about a minute I want to accomplish. So the thumbnails itself maybe take me about, I don't know, 10 minutes. And they're really, really simple, like just stick figures. I'm just trying to figure out who's going to be in the shot, what is the shot? Like, is it an up shot, down shot, side shot? Um, what's happening? And it's really, really quick, not much details. It's, it's very simple. Or a piece of furniture can literally just be a blob. Oh, I can literally go chair, uh, just write down mm -hmm. chair. And for, I'm like, okay, got it. For me, with thumbnails, I, I tend to prefer, like, characters' faces or, like, whoever, so that way people have something to identify. Like, Otterton video, it's like, oh, Otterton has to be in the video. Oh, no, we're talking about, like, storyboarding. Oh, I, I thought I heard thumbnail. Well, yeah, that's, that, they use thumbnails that's for That's a new art term that we'll, we'll, we'll tell you about it later. <laughs> yeah. I'll teach, it, I'll teach you about it I'll later. teach you all of the things. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> that's, yeah. Is this good? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought it would be like two of a close. Um, as you guys have been doing your videos and whatnot, have you thought like of what you'd ideally like to do next? Like, for example, like for Dingo, you know, currently you're doing the Fool's Gold stuff and things like that. Do you think your next set of videos after, let's say, that wraps up, would it just be another campaign? Would it be more like self-enclosed stuff? So, like, what's our next big project? Next big well, project. Well, like, like, yeah, like, like, how does like inspiration hit you? And then there's also like that that nervousness of like, well, is this going to be as well liked as what I did before? And how do you deal with that kind of struggle? You know? Um, ben, do you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I worry about some of the old stuff. Like the thing is that if if you've been making content for like any length of time, what happens is you have some videos that are like really strong, and then the next video that comes out is like not as strong, and you have to be like, oh, this is just you know funny because it's uh, the problem is that if you keep trying to like one up yourself over and over, you'll never make content. Even as like a GM, like you're running games, like you'll have a game that goes over like really well, and like ooh, it's got to be like ten times better. And the problem is sometimes you get content that's like really strong and it's like you have to just kind of be okay with like this is just good or great content. And then, and then there's also this, the, the thing where you, you have this cool idea and you start making it and it gets like down, it's not as good. It's like you thought it was a 10 out of 10 and it's really an 8 out of 10 and you have to be okay with it being yeah. Yeah, at that level. Well, what, would, what about you? I Jeff? would like to make like an animated short film, like, a, like 10 to 15 minutes like fully animated I don't know. I don't know what it'd be about, but I would like to fully animate something to the level of my Nuzlocke intros. Totally. Yeah. Uh, for me, I mean, the Fool's Gold campaign actually is like, I looked at how many episodes it'll probably be. It's going to be a few years. Like, <coughs> wow. Yeah, it's a long campaign. It's like a, it took a year and a half, so it's going to be a long campaign. And I, even starting in the middle, wow, a lot of stuff. But um, after that, uh, actually, on my, on my side, um, I actually write pilots for shows in the way, and I kind of like try to pitch them to companies and stuff like that. So originally, after this, I was like hoping to eventually get into TV. You know, writing for TV would be really cool. I'm treating this YouTube project as a way for me to figure out how to write a TV show. So like that's why my that's why my content's very TV esque, like like it's dialogue also a portfolio. and stuff. It's my portfolio and also my like learning ground. Like I, I need to figure out how things work. That's like, part of the reason I started on YouTube was like even if it doesn't go anywhere, at least I have like a portfolio of artwork that I can like yeah. I have experience with this. Yeah. And as far as the second part of the question, like about how do you know if it's gonna do well, you don't. You just yeah. gotta like you just gotta trust that you what you're doing is you're passionate about and um, it's gonna be your personal growth. Yes. And 
the only person you can guarantee that is going to like it is you, so make it something that you like, because you can't guarantee anybody else is going to like no. it. You have to be proud of it. You have to make something that you're proud of. You can't really cater to anyone but yourself. Okay. Uh, thank, thank, you. You. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. So um, I was wondering what everyone's favorite video to make was. Maybe not necessarily the most mechanically well done, but what was favorite to make? Mm. Like fun? Yes. Kind of thing? Fun. <sighs> I gotta think of that one, Ben. Do you okay, know? I uh, so pro so one that which came out like really well uh, was the the latest like Call of Cthulhu video I did. The storyline I really liked. Um, I also liked the Deadlands storyline uh, where they're going for gold. Um, and then the the other one that I really liked was um, there was one with uh, Bernard the the whale and <laughs> Fidey the spider. And then at the end it has the joke with the turtle friends where they're like. Uh, uh, what's your guys' name? Turtle beep, and <laughs> and it's like I'm not going to talk about that, which uh, they my comment section has been bringing up on every single video. <laughs> I think my favorite is not an, even a D and D; it's a game video. It's uh, my overly edited Persona Five series because I get That's to a I'm a graphic idea. designer. I have a master's degree in graphic design, and I just loved recreating all the like UI stuff and the popping. And I made like a like a red and white persona style pog face and it was great and yeah that that was my personal favorite i think i have like i have one that's the D D one which was like episode six which is when mr wizardly comes in and that was a really fun video to draw because he's just such a such a bitch so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it was fun to draw him and he was he was really fun and then uh i had a life video that i drew about me in water and that was really fun. Yeah, that was really fun. I loved uh, just going hog wild on that one and uh, just kind of like stretching my legs and having fun. Yeah, yeah that was probably Thank good. you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Next question. Hello, good afternoon. Um, Hi. So uh, uh, I heard the story that you were inspired to go through Fool's Gold when you saw Puffin. And you're like, here's my thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I noticed a similar Im uh, animation where characters here, and it smashes it, and it works, I've seen it throughout distinct styles. How, um, how much artistically are you looking at YouTube and kind of going to, and not stealing, but I mean being inspired by other artists and their styles, and also from where you guys started, like a, a, an awesomely apocalyptic karaoke story, <laughs> a character death, how to do D&D poorly, do you start with the premise of, I've got funny stories, so I'm going to use a cartoony style? Yeah. Or did you start from, I've got a kind of cartoony style, I'm maybe going to go a little more humorous. Right, so what so, came first? Yeah. So, so it, it kind of, like, yeah. are, how, so how, are you, how are you influenced artistically, and what comes yeah, first? Yeah, so Dingo, how much of a Jaden Animations clone are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's art. It's no, inspiration. It's, it's I no, kid. I know. We're friends. I know, we're friends. Don't hate me. You steal from every, <laughs> everything and yeah. is inspiring. Yeah. Do you remember what I said about the teasing, making someone legitimately mad or not? Now I'm feeling that right no, now. No, no! <laughs> no, actually, well, it was definitely like uh, watching the Storytime animations, just like their format, because I really like their format. Um, but as for my style, like the way I draw, that's from like my comics, which was like, I just kept getting my eyes bigger and bigger, and I just kept going. Um, that's actually stemmed from like a, like a Deviant Art account that I saw, and I was like, I really like their style. And um, I kind of took a, some inspiration of their style, but it eventually morphed into what you guys see yeah. now. Uh, but as for what came first, I think it was the art. And then um, my humor kind of fell through. But it, it, really, it really goes hand in hand uh, where I just, I think in jokes. OK. Also, <laughs> the other thing about the eye thing, like I think everyone realizes when they start drawing, like there's so much space on a person's face. Like the eyes yeah. are tiny. Like you could, like, you look, all this forehead could be taken up with two giant eyes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Like really terrible design the way. Is there, was there anything that inspired you, Ben, yeah. that you take inspiration uh, so, from? So uh, for me, I started with the Goofy Stories, and then I had to adjust and do art, and then it's like you realize, like, I could, this story deserves better art, and so you start practicing and stuff, and then get, like, hopefully better and better. So yours uh, was stuff. story before but, the art. Yeah, but it's also, for me, it's, it's the realization, like, expressive faces are, the, are a huge part of the story for me, and so that's why I started practicing on. 
And for me, I uh, just really liked this one character uh, from Arby and the Chief. It's Master Chief, and he's a big jerk. And uh, he had a show where he would review games badly, like he reviewed Ocarina of Time, and it's like, oh, look at this controller, it's dumb, it's got three sticks, what do you do with the third stick? Shove it up your butt? And I was like, oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> this guy's and, hilarious. Yeah, and I'm like, I want to do that for the stuff that I like, because that doesn't exist Actually, for the one stuff of, what one I Actually, one of the first videos I made saw me, I, I really like Zero Punctuation by Yahtzee. That one, yeah. And what happened um, is, woo! I started, uh, I actually tried, the first time I ever made a video, I tried to make it similar to like, like I was borrowing from his style, and then like within like ten seconds of making the video, I'm like, no, yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> I forget if I got through the script or started reading it, but it's like the other thing is his his style is so different from the way that I naturally do my humor, kind of a thing that it's like I can't. This is not my. Whereas his style is something good. that I completely ripped off. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah, how much then, of a clone are you? Yeah, well, not, about 90%. The, yeah. the drawing is like the, the other 10%. And then the drawing came second because originally I did it for Monster Hunter where there was no drawing. And um, I was just like, well, I'm going to do it for D&D, but I don't, there's not enough B roll for me to use. I would have to go through so much B roll. So I was like, well, it's a paper, pen and paper. So, you know, let's draw. What, how would this guy draw? Well, he would draw like this, and then that, that's how it works. Yeah. We do only have two minutes left, so we're going to yeah. wrap oh up. Thank you for the question. Okay. Next. Next. So, um, first up, I want to thank you, Joe Cat, face to face, for the Surfetched video. You're welcome. Because that came out of nowhere, <laughs> and that was amazing. Um, but secondly, for the three of you, um, and Joe Cat specifically, because he made such a big jump in his videos, is what made you decide to do videos on D&D &D specifically? Why D&D? Because &D? I like it. <laughs> Bam! But next question. Also, no. <laughs> also because it's, I, I think we mentioned this earlier, there's just so much to it, you know? There's so much cool stuff and it's fun to play pretend and this is an adult version of play pretend and there's so many cool stories to tell for me personally. Yeah, I mean with me, Dungeons and Dragons was way more interesting than my life. So I was just like, this seems like a way better story to tell people than, than my actual yeah. everyday. All right, Ben, go we, fast. Yeah, we have one, time for maybe one more question. Yeah. Say it really ben, quick. you didn't answer. Go you fast. Go fast. <laughs> fast. <laughs> quick. Don't tell a story. Uh, anyway, I, like, I love Dungeons & Dragons, and so that's, that's what I do. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, so you have all become really successful in your own right, and it sounds like you all started just doing this for fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the quick question, how many hours a week do you actually spend working on this? And is it supplementary income or full time now? For me, it's full time. Full -time. And full time. Uh, I, the thing is that uh, when I do an animation, it's a huge time sink. And then other times it can be kind of slow. Yeah, it's scripting. inconsistent. I think if I were to average, it would be uh, probably like a typical 40 hour work week. Mine's 40 to 60. I, I, I work on a consistent, like I work you know, five to six days a week. Which yeah. is not healthy. Don't do that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, one more. Last question. So sorry, anyone who we didn't get to. Um, sorry. So, uh, Ben Puffin, yeah. uh, I only recently just became a fan of your videos. I looked at them and I just go, meh. But when <laughs> I started watching them, I'm like, this guy is actually pretty cool. Uh, this is mainly for you then. Uh, my group is so bad with remembering what it is, I actually end up having to become the group chronicler. I just want to know, like, do you do that when you like run groups? Do you go into this thinking like maybe something in here is going to be funny, or do you just go in and just play the damn game? Um, so the thing is that honestly, I just kind of play. Like I do have a bunch of ideas going in, and then I have to remind the players what's going on. Um, but I think sometimes you just kind of go in and play, and then just see what comes out of it is the best option. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank one, you everyone for coming. Yeah. And one Appreciate last it. thing. Yeah. One last thing, um, today at 2 o'clock, I will be signing at booth uh, 4001, 4001 uh, at the Deck of Many. Can I so, come? Yeah, you can come if you want. But, <laughs> but yeah, so I'll be there from 2 until I get tired, which is, I'm trying for 4 o'clock. So at least till 4, okay. I'll be signing. Right, cool. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. You're all beautiful.